Hi everyone, we are going to uncover the history and the future of the Five Realms universe in this strange new land in the Sixth Realm. Yes, this is the newest Euro game coming from Final Frontier Games, was designed by Matthew Dunstan, Seth Jaffe and Drake Villarreal, uh, who has, uh, the latter of those has done several with Final Frontier in the past. Yes, we've yeah. been enjoying all of their games, the three of them actually. Yes. And as with the other ones in this series, it was uh, illustrated by Mihaila Dimitrovsky. AKA the, the Miko. Oh, the Miho? Is that how you meant to Mixo. say it? The Miko. Sorry. I just say the Miko. Oops. So we've been enjoying you know, Matthew Dunson's games, such as Guild of the Merchants Explorer, just one of them, and just many, many more. And Seth Jaffe has designed a few as well. And one of them is Eminent Domain, which is a deck building game that I've enjoyed, and Drag, which you mentioned. Yes. So we uh, we're going to do a few rounds playthrough, or just one round playthrough. We're going to do a one year playthrough. One this year is a playthrough. It's a game that's split into three years, and each year has seven uh, rounds. And yep. so we'll be taking you through the first year of the game. The good thing is that it's not the actual one year of your time, so don't worry. It's not going to be one year. Yes. <laughs> it's probably like thirty minutes ish. Yeah. Imagine how long a one year video would take us to film and edit. It's probably five years. Yeah. <laughs> the full time five years. Uh, this game plays one to four players. And it is, at the time of filming, is about to go on Kickstarter. Yes. And hello everyone, I'm Stella and this is Tarot from Maple University. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you a quick overview of the game before jump right in and then keep explaining what you do. Because there are a few things that you do in this game. Yes. But pretty, you know, pretty straightforward once you know what they are. Yes, so let's jump down. I actually am going to jump in a lot more quickly than usual uh, because here is the sixth realm and there's a whole lot of different areas that represent the different guilds in the game. Also, before we start showing more of the game, I just want to let you know that we will be rotating the board 90 degrees here and there just to show you the icons upright and just to zoom in a little bit more on the board. Yes, thanks for that. Cool. So this bit down here, this is the Stone Council, uh, whom, we've, whom we've met before in these yeah. games. Hello. And from round to round, this is going to rotate, and there's only going to be three guilds and therefore three areas of the board available in each round. And there'll be one primary guild and two secondary guilds that cost a bit extra to use. And so we're kind of going to see a progression as we go around of what each guild is. And that's good, that's gonna let us introduce each of them as we come along. Mm. What's important is that when the time comes to use a given guild, uh, your ability to take actions is going to be based on this section of your player board. It's gonna tell you how many action points you get. And the more action points you have in a given area, the more powerful those turns are going to be. Uh, there's a whole lot of things over on this side of the board that we can be placing out onto the main board as we go along and it's going to unlock certain things uh, and there's a number of different tracks and free actions which you'll start to see as well. Victory points is ultimately this purple track here. So you probably won't see us gain that many in the first year but that is the, uh, that is the victory point track and that's what we're targeting. Right, so we'll go straight into it. We're in the first round, the, uh, this is pointing this way, so our primary guild in this particular round is green, which is this location here. Uh, or the secondary guilds are red, exploring the dungeon, and purple, which is uh, writing the history. You are the first player in this first round, and so you're going to get to take the first turn. Yes, so to use the primary guild, it is, well, I don't have to spend extra resources for it, but to use these two, I'm going to have to flip the matching one. So this purple one, for example, I have to flip uh, this one to use these resources. It will come back at the, with certain actions yes. and benefits. And you're going to see these resources are a major part of the game. You can only have up to two of each. And there's a constant flow of us flipping these over to gain extra action points, do things out of sequence. 
and trying to flip them back so we can take those as often as possible. We start with one of each. Yes, so I can use one of these two by flipping one of these two, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the green gills straight away. So we go to your board and there's two markers on each of these and right now you have one action point in green. Down the bottom here in, on this book, it may give you more. You'll see over here on brown, you've got a plus one. So you actually right now would have two action points on brown, but you only have one on green. Uh, however, you can spend the matching colored resources to advance this token before cashing in for action points. Which I am actually going to do that. So I will flip that to go up here. And if you see on the board, so this indicates the action points that you spend to get what. So one is to flip this resource that we just talked about back. Number two is flipping the book that we saw here underneath this. And number three is gaining the resource. So I'm going to start by gaining resource. So straight away, I'm going to get the resource that I need. Yep, so you, admit, you move the cart onto yes. the guild that's relevant. So it is green or grey, which I'm moving it here. And then tag that, that straight away. It takes all my action points, which you can actually track here. So um, I use all of them and then this goes back down to the bottom and then I get this and that's my action. Very good. All right, it will go to my turn. So I'm going to do much the same. I'm going to flip the, I'm going to activate green. I'm going to flip this resource to advance my marker one space. This is not the only way to advance these markers. You'll see that icon comes up in various places. Yes. Now I'll cash that into action points. So I'm going to take three action points for this turn. And I'm going to do the other two effects. And I'm not going to uh, get a resource. I'm going to try to build my engine in other ways. So now that the cart is here, I have to move it before each of my action points. Uh, because you were the first player, you just got to move it to the one of your choice. I have to choose a direction and each of my actions has to go in that sequence. I'm going to spend this one here, take two action points and move the cart here to flip my purple book. So most of these books, if I flip them over, it would give me one extra action point. With purple, because I got to, I had that starting on the one extra action point, I flip it over and I get to advance this marker down the bottom. I lose my one extra action point. So essentially I've just gone from two action points to three as a base in the purple action. So that's two of my action points done. The third is, if I want to do a third, I would have to move, keep moving this way and take the one action point, which is to flip the blue resource back over. But it's not flipped over. It is blue. Yes. It's not currently flipped over, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to do the all purpose backup action. You can do this on any guild. You can spend an action point to advance on the council track. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to advance one step here and get the bonus. And what I've gained here is a step on the Queen's Ambition track, which is this one here. That has some benefits that we'll, uh, we'll come to see them as we go along, but I've advanced on that track. That is a sequence track. So even if you jump on top of me, I am ahead. So before we go on, I'm going to take one of the free actions, which is available. And that's going to be to write a scroll. We each start with one ink. And with this ink, we can place it onto any scroll we've unlocked. We start with only these two, and there are other ones that we can get later. And uh, these will stay clear until we use an effect that lets us remove the ink. So we're constantly going to be filling up these scrolls for their effects and then trying to clear them off to unlock it again. So this lets me flip a resource back over. So I'm going to do that. And now that's going to be available next time I want to take an action. And there we go. That is the end of the first round. So now we rotate this marker one step clockwise. And you'll see I have a counselor in the active chair. Let's lean these guys over in the active chair of this guild. This was something that was done during setup. That means I take the first player marker and I will retain that until we go to another guild where you have the first player. Which at the moment is this one, but we could potentially add more as we go along. 
So the choices here, we've got purple, which is the historian section. We could do green again by spending a resource, or we could spend the resource to do the blue action area. Because I'm very powerful in purple, I'm going to do purple. And I'm going to flip my resource over to add more action points. So I'm going to do this with five action points. This reverts down to here. And there's two things that I can do over here. I can move historians. So you'll see there's four historians here. They can move up and down on their own rows or columns. And when I move them, I gain the benefit that I cover. The other thing is I can uh, write these traditions. I can take these tokens off the board and put them onto my player board to unlock uh, some Point more scrolls, two. some envoy actions, a couple of things there. So with five action points, the first thing I will do is spend one action point to move this historian here. The effect there is I get to remove an ink. So I'm going to take this ink off its scroll and return it to the supply. Then I'm going to take a tradition. So my first tradition will cost me two action points because that's what's printed on my board. And I can take any tradition which is adjacent to at least one historian. So what I'll do, I'll take this one in the middle. This allows me to, I can spend an ink onto this to flip the blue red resource back over. I also cover up an ink icon, so I gain an ink for that. And you don't activate that until later. Correct. You do get the bonus right away, and that's the cost. Yep, and this is replenished immediately. And that's, uh, that's the same one. It's got a different seal color on it. We'll see these seals come into play a little bit later. Then with my last two remaining action points, I'm going to take one of these other ones. These are, uh, these are envoy actions that I have on these traditions. They work differently to the scrolls. The bonus I gain here is one popularity. So that's that little track down here. I'll advance one step on there. What's going to happen here is this is how you gain envoys into your player board. But you need to reach the marker here, so every three popularity is going to gain an envoy. At least at the start of the game. Okay. There we go. So I have finished all of those. I'm also now going to spend this ink I just gained to flip this one back over. So I'm also going to do the purple action. I'm going to flip this to make this three. So three, well, I'm going to just like do this and then this come back to here. And with this three, I'd like to move this purple, uh, this person there and gaining this bonus. And yeah. that's which is um, moving these um, the same as the brown number or year number. Yes, these ones that show a question, a question mark, mark, they here. represent the year number. So I moved it here, and that's one action, and then the two action. I'm going to gain the banner. Can you please pass me the top right, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that costs two because it's two here, and then the bonus here is I'm gaining one ink, similar to what Taryn got. Like that. And I want to use one of these now to unflip something, this one. Like a duplicate. Okay, that's the end of that round. So should have moved the cart back to the middle oh, yes. of the last yes. round. That goes back each time. Now we rotate down and the primary guild this time is blue. I'm still first player because it's not been taken from me. And I'm very strong in purple. purple. So I'm actually going to do purple, purple again. again. So um, for the first time, I'm going to show you how to use not the primary guild. I'm going to flip over the purple resource. I no longer have a resource to gain any more steps here, but I do have three, three action points. Now my next uh, scroll is going to cost three action points. So I can either take. just take one scroll or I can move the historians around three steps. And in this instance, I'm going to do the three steps. So I'm going to go, simply move this guy around. I'm going to go one, two, three. So I've unlocked two. a popularity point, a step on the Queen's Ambition track, Which and another is? popularity point. And two yeah. things are going to trigger here, one on each of those tracks. So I'll come up here first. This was the first one I resolved. I get to place a feet tile. 
So each of us has, in the two-player game, it's five of these diamond-shaped tiles. Uh, these are triangular tiles in the higher player counts, so that uh, each player has less area to cover. And I look through all of these and I choose one to add to the board. And I can uh, place it adjacent to anything that's already there. And this is going to be a major part of end game scoring. So if we focus in up here, there'll be a whole lot of objectives and the aim is to get two adjacent objectives unlocked and met to score the points. Right now, the only thing that's unlocked is if you have five ink and five traditions on your board at the end of the game, you'll score three points and both of us can score that. What I'm going to do right now is place one of my three markers, there's a four, a three and a two point marker, into any intersection on that board and I then score the points I placed, so I score four, four points, and I unlock this objective for everyone. So now, again, either of us, by getting five traditions and four of these guild upgrades, which we haven't seen yet, uh, we'll score four points at the end of the game. That's gonna be very, very good because I can see how your strategy is now. You have a very strong purple action and then you've unlocked this one because this is how you, your, you can spend your purple actions. Yes. For. Yep, and it's, this also highlights the importance of getting at least two Queen's Ambition steps in each year, because yes. these will reset at the end of the round. Um, by doing that, you'll score a total of nine points across the game by just putting your tokens out. Okay. So that's what happens up there. Down here, I get to take an envoy. So I drop down to zero, and I choose an envoy, and that envoy is going to, uh, I'm going to get some sort of bonus out of that. The color, will be based on what bonus I want to try to get. And if I really want to be strong on purple, that might be a sensible one to take. Yeah. But there's some nuance to how this works. So I'm actually going to take the red to start with, place it into one of my arrival slots. That's these six slots at the top of the board. So I'm going to use this opportunity to do blue action. I'm going to flip this. So I'm going to have three blue action and then I'm going to use this ink now this is actually a banner you can use it as a banner to add another two so it's like so and then hence I have five all up I'm putting it back there so with my five now this is to do with navigations up here so with one or two and three I can build one two or three bridges Yep. And just to be clear, so it's the first bridge costs you one action point, the yes. second bridge costs you two, two for a total of three, yeah. the third will cost you three for a total of six. Thank you. So I am planning with my five action points, I'm planning to build two bridges. So one plus two is three, and then I'm going to build a tower as well, which is going to cost me two total of five. So I'm going to just move all my action point to zero. I'm going to take all the pieces here with me that I need. I'm going to go up here, I'm planning to go on this two. Yep. So the first thing first, I'm going to place this one here and getting this bonus. So this is to do with the brown action on my board, which is this one. So I'm going up one. And this one is here. Now this get, get, has something to do with this action. Yeah, this lets you move, move move a historian one step and get the bonus you cover. Yes. So I'm going to move this one. So I feel like I want to kind of like specialize more also on blue, so I'm going to move this one here, covering this. Yep. And this symbol will let me go up here. Now this is to do with scoring at the end of the game, of yes. the seals yep. and various things. Yep, and this combos with the tower that you're just about to place. Yes, which I'm going to place here. So I will take this too. I will look, so the top one is visible, the bottom one is face down. Yep. And this is a special thing at two players, this board is usually a bit bigger and there's only one of these relics in each place. Yes, thank you Taryn. And I'm going to take this one, this red seal, it will combo with the red seal I already have on my board. So I'm going to discard this, mm -hmm. put it away. Now this with this red seal, I am going to put it on one of these four and getting the bonus right away. And I'm going to put it on the ink. So this is to either gain ink or remove an ink. And I'm going to just remove it here. 
it's probably going to be handy to do that. Yeah, that's always a very important scroll to have available when you need it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what all of that means, this will now score a number of, this will now score one point for each number of red seals you have on your scrolls and on your uh, collection of seals. And how many depends on this track, that's where yeah. it combos. Right now you'll get one point for every three red seals, but if you can race this up to the top, it'll be one, one point for one. every red seal, and then you would try mm -hmm. to get a series of these with red seals as well. Yeah, there's one, one, thing, one more thing I haven't explained. So you are able to build the tower if you have at least, or if these sections, particular sections on the board is complete, like this one is complete, the two of them there, and at least one of your bridges is there. So if this is your bridge, Taryn, then I can still able to build here or here. Correct. Right now I can't legally place a... Um, a tower. A there. tower. Yeah. And if I put this here, I still couldn't legally place a tower, but if I put it here, I could build a tower in one of those two. Yes. If I took the action, which I did not. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Right, on to round four. So the Builders Guild is the primary guild in this case. I'm still first player. That's the guild I'm going to use. So I'll flip this over to get myself three action points. And the actions here, so you can build a foundation. Uh, you can only build one of each foundation per turn and they cost two, three or four action points. Then on the foundation you've just placed, you can spend one or two action points to build a house. And the houses will gain the benefit in the row or column or both, depending on how many action points you spent. So you have to build the house then, you can't really add the house later. Yeah. And the actual placing of the house itself is free, but you must have enough action point to trigger the bonus. Yes. Or bonuses. So I'm going to try, I'm not interested in my house, I'm going to try to get more benefits from covering. So I'm going to spend three action points to place the uh, medium sized foundation. I'm going to place it here. And there's two benefits I get. This one is going to let me put a guild bonus into my brown slot. So that's one of these six here. So I'm going to place this guild bonus here. Now every time brown is the primary guild, which is going to happen next turn, I'm going to gain two popularity. Then this one here is going to let me advance two steps around the council track. So the first one goes there and lets me place a councillor. And I'm going to, I want to keep first player. So I'm actually going to, I could put them into a new slot or I could bump you out of an existing slot and push you into one of these. Or bump yourself. Or bump myself. But I want to stay first player. So this gives you a point. So you do get a benefit out of that. But I'm going to monopolize first player. And then my second one is to gain a popularity. Okay, I'm out of action points. You'll go. One more thing that you, um, you will gain benefit with uh, the guild banner. Yes. is this one. So you have four, you gain four points. Yes, I'm highly incentivized to uh, get those out. Yep. Both of us are. Yes, so your foundation's out. Now I will also do the gray action. I have one and I'm gonna flip one more and I have three. Sorry, let me replenish. Yes. That, because you always have one of each to play with. Yes. With the three action, I'm going to build the small one here. And I'm going to build it here. So I can place adjacent to Terran's foundation, or I can start somewhere on the edge. I'm going to do this one. So this is similar to what Terran did. It's a bonus on the red track. So first, I'm going to place that one here. That is going to cost me two action and replacing that. And I'm gonna put the house in there. Now, first thing first, I'm gonna resolve this, which is a banner on this one. And I'm gonna use the, the ink one. I feel like I'm a little bit lean on the ink. Look, all, almost all of these are flipped and have a lot. So I'm gonna put the ink one there for gaining one ink. Now the second one is one more point here is to activate the bonus. So I'm going to focus on the red one again. So I'm going to go up on the right track. So uh, in the 
next two, I think it's gonna go red, and I'm gonna not only I'm gonna get ink, but I have more actions to use. Okay, building action complete. Parents first play again. All right, remain first, and we're in the brown guild. So this is actually gonna be a weak turn for me because um, I don't have ink to unflip my resources. I did spend this earlier to get really strong on purple, but the offset is I'm very weak now on on brown. So the first thing that will happen is because we're in the primary one for brown, I gain my guild bonus. So I get two steps, and now I get to take another envoy. Nice. So I'm going to take the purple envoy and this time. And then this time. resets. That resets. And I've got two options. I can either place the envoy into its own column and try to fill these up later, or I can place it into the same column as one I've already got. And the benefit would be I would unflip the resource if they matched, or I would gain a Queen's Ambition step if they did not match. I am going to place them both. I'm going to gain a Queen's Ambition step. Just make sure I lock that down for this year. Now, without any resource to flip, I only have a single action point to spend here. And there are two options. Well, sorry, there are three options. You can spend an action point to gain an ink, remove an ink, or three action points to remove all ink. Very useful later on in the game, a little more efficient. And uh, what I will do is use it to gain an ink at this point. Okay, so that's my main action done. Now I am going to take the other type of free action, which is to move envoys. You can move a single envoy if it's in a column or if they're both together, you have to move them both. Envoys get permanently moved into the plaza, or slots that are unlocked for these buildings, or onto these banners down the bottom. And then there's various effects you can resolve. So up here in the plaza, you get some action, po action points for every pair of matching ones, and you score endgame points for having non-matching ones. Pretty handy way of getting points in a low points game. Uh, these ones are all kind of engine build things, so you can flip your books, you can gain seals, or you can increase your action points. And then down the bottom, it's, it's a variety. So what I'm gonna do is move my red envoy down to this space. That lets me put a guild bonus onto the red action, which I know is gonna be unlocked next time. So that's a good one for this moment. Yeah, very good. And I'm going to use the remove ink one. Put that there. And then I must move my purple as well. I'm just gonna move the purple into this slot and gain actions for next time we come around to purple. For my action, I'll also use the brown action, main action. And at the moment I have three plus one, so that's four. I want to flip my resource to gain two more. Make it six, powerful it six. turn. Yeah. Right, so with the six action, I'm going to split it this time. So the actual brown action is over here. So I want to do two of these, which is to remove an ink and then gain an ink. That's two. And the other four, I'm going to use it to move it here. So the all purpose action. So one, two, three, four. So I am going to action all of these. The first one and the last one is to move there which I'm going to use to place this one over there. Yep. So I'm going to try, because I have a pretty good, I think, brown action. Hopefully I'm going to build on that. And I'm going to place my number four here. I have a house already, and then this is this requires three houses. And I we need four council member, which I have at the moment one about to add one more. And so you're getting yes. four points for placing that token. That's correct. Thanks, Tara. Woohoo, winning. And with this action, is putting council member, I'm going to put it right here. So next time, I will be the first player. And then to finish off my action, I will move... Oh, sorry, one more thing. I will do this one, which is moving my... Popularity. Sorry, popularity up by one. And to finish my action, I will put my ink here, use my ink to flip this for a more powerful red action, and I'll be the first player as well. So round six, you have taken first player with your council member. And we both have guild bonuses here, which yep. is good, but you go first. So for me, I am simply gaining an ink. Now I will flip this. 
So I'll have all five actions to use this term, this time. Now I'm going to use this ink first to start off my action to put it here. And I will increase my blue action for next time. Now I'm going to start my action. So it's this one, Adventurer, Adventurer Guild. Yes, so every, every step here is very simple. Every action point lets you move one step on the track and get the bonus you cover. All right, so I'm going to start moving here to get one ink. Move here to remove an ink. This one. This one to gain or remove ink. I'm going to remove this again. And now this is a, there are two choices. I can either gain one of these for end game points or I can gain um, try to get it from the bag. I'm going to try to get it from the bag. Yes, we haven't uh, used a bag here. I'll just put them in stacks. But yes. There we go. So you get to look at those, choose one, and discard the others. Yes, so uh, these are the options. So this is similar to that. It's basically, um, I'm going to pick this one because this will get me either one or three points for majority in purple or red. Yes, all of these are majorities. So if you have the most or equal most, on a tile like this, you would gain two points. On a tile like this, you would gain one point if you have majority on one of the two, or three points if you have majority on both. Yeah. At the moment, I only have one red, but <laughs> we'll I see. Have zero. Yeah. I do have a purple though, so I know. you've got uh, you've got work to do there. Correct. And last action is just simply to go there and then gain a step here. Whoops. Okay. Okay, so first I get guild bonus, which is to remove an ink. Then I'm going to take, I'm going to take a different free action. I'm going to use ink on this space here. Now this will give me one popularity for every differently colored seal I have, which is one, two, three. So I get three Pretty popularity good. and immediately gain another envoy. And I'm going to get a green one. So you can see this is an interesting balance here. Mm. A lot of these objectives incentivize you to specialize on seals, but you can get a lot of envoys through this scroll if you don't. All right, then I'll flip my red resource over to advance on here, which gives me, oh yep, yeah, gives me three action points. And I will move through the dungeon. I gain one ink, I remove one ink, and I gain one ink. <laughs> nice. Pretty good, so now I have some ink I can use. Um, and you're going to use it now? There's, it's not strongly needed to, actually no, I will use it now. I'm going to use this one again, get another three steps and Ooh. another envoy. This time they're matching envoys, so I get to flip the matching resource over. I'm also going to place this one here to flip over purple, because now we come to the seventh round and this is this one behaves differently. In the seventh round of each year, whoever is leading on the Queen's Ambition track, which is Are me, because I'm on the bottom, gets to choose the primary guild. So this is the real benefit here. It lets you do your specialist action, or your best action, twice. This is one where I'm the first player, so I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to go straight in with a lot of action points mm, on this I can one. see that. You've um, got lots of them there. I'm going to flip this over to go up to eight. I'm going to take eight action points in purple. Also, each of these may only be chosen for this extra action once per game, and so this gets flipped to the dark side to represent that. So with eight action points, I can get my next two banners. So I'll spend the first three of them to grab this one. I'm going to go very specialist on purple, so I'm going to place this here. That lets me remove a remove an ink as the bonus. And then I replenish this from the supply. I'm going to take this one. Another three. three. This gives me two popularity as a bonus. One, nice. two. I have no envoy whatsoever. <laughs> You're almost there. Yeah. But uh, you've got you've got other Stuff. You've got a lot of space for envoys. That's so true. you do need to get some. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll place this here. And then I've got two action points left, so I'll use them shuffling these guys around. Actually, I'll get another envoy, because that will make it harder for you. I'm going to take Just get replenished. this envoy, and That's correct. I'm going to grab an ink with the last one. 
But what happens now with the envoy is because the boat only has one left, we refill it to six, which is the two player quantity. Sorry, I went to there and dropped down. Refill to six, but this goes up, so it's harder for me to get envoy. Yes. Although these question marks are going to get more valuable pretty soon. Correct, yeah. All right, so that's my main actions. I'm also now going to uh, use my ink to take this one. This is one of the key ones that helps you with specialization of, of seals. So I would get one popularity plus one popularity per purple seal of which I have three. So that's another four popularity. I get another envoy. It can't be a matching one. And there's no incentive to get more steps on Queen's Ambition. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to take a purple one and go into its own column. And so this is where you've, you have no envoys, but lots yeah. of spaces for them. I have yeah. lots of envoys <laughs> and no spaces. I am going to take the free action to move these two green envoys into the plaza. So it's a single color, so it'll be worth one point at the end of the game. But because they match, I get to increase my green actions for what may well be the next uh, turn. So there we go. Mm. I'm not going to use my purple action this time, but I'm going to use my blue, my stronger one, which is next to it. And I'm going to use this ink first to put it here, to flip this one here first. And then I'm going to flip it back to actually pay for that action. Yes. I have three here and I'm going to use it to build a bridge and which is that one there. Yep. That is to um, up yep. my blue. So it's gone down to zero first and then go up again. With two more action, I'm going to do a, a tower building. This is my tower. I'm going to just build it here and then just choose one of these two bonuses, which I'm going to use this one. So that is a banner. That is the guild bonuses. The guild bonuses, sorry. Which gives me um, more bonus at the end of the game for the guild. And I'm going to place it here for more navigation. All right, and there we reach. That is the end of year one. So what's going to happen now? This will come back to here for the next round. Uh, but everyone except for the Queen's Champion, as the person who's leading on that, gets to swap a pair of these guilds around. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter at two players, but you'd also lock one of your choices so mm. that the players after you couldn't change it. So you get to do a swap. I'm going to swap. I want the first action to be the blue one. Then we reset Queen's Ambition. So everyone goes back to the start uh, in the same order that they finished. Everyone moves back on the dungeon, but to different places. So I go back to space number one and Stella goes back to space number two. And then we go to the next, the next year. And so that is the bulk. That is basically everything that you can do in the sixth realm. You'd play this over three years of play and it's going to escalate as all your engine builds up and get more resources and you can do more action points. Fundamentally, the ways that you'll score at the end of the game, uh, we've mentioned most of them as we've gone along. So it'll be anything you've collected through the game. It will be any of your relics. So there again, you count up how many of the thing that you have that's on the relic and divide it by wherever you are on the navigation track and get points for those. Uh, you'll score points for all the different envoys in your plaza only. You'll score points for any of the artifacts whose conditions you met. You score the printed points on any of the pairs of objectives that you've met. So again, there's already four pairs of objectives out there. The ones that are on the single tiles and the ones that we've put our tokens on. And remember, at higher player counts, those are going to be triangles, so there'll be a little more uh, choice over which ones are going to come into play. And the last one is that houses out here are going to score one point for each completed row or column that they're in of foundations. So this one's going to become more valuable if more players are building or if you're getting all of your houses into specific locations. Um, it's not, you know, the score track only goes up to 30, so it's not a game where you're going to have hundreds of points. No, not the this points one. are tough to come by. Oh, yeah, very. Like one point is like, oh, yes, one point. Mm -hmm. 
And there we have it. That is the sixth realm. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions, please write in the comments below. We'll also put the link to the project page in the description below so you can check it out if you like. And hopefully you have a great day. Thanks again for watching. Bye.